problem. Yeah, so uh, Deckman is a platform for digital trading cards and also two games, Deckman Heroes and Deckman Quest, which use those same trading cards. Um, we've built the platform out such that you can share cards between different games. So you play a card in one game, you level it up in that game and take it to another game, and it's got new abilities, it's got better experience, those kind of things. Deckbound Heroes is a multiplayer competitive CCG. Uh, you play against either a human opponent or an AI, a series of rounds to win matches. Uh, Deckbound Quest is a single player dungeon explorer uh, where you explore a series of levels in a dungeon, picking up fragments as you go and summoning creatures to fight alongside you. Uh, because both uh, games use the same set of cards, uh, you can play your experience and skills in one game against another game. So some cards might be better for you in one game, but worse for another player. Uh, you can trade the cards and find the balance that way. So when you are saying trading card game, yeah. it reminds me of, of, uh, about uh, Magic the Gathering. But right, what yeah. you are describing sounds more like a strategy game. Um, so how do they relate? Sure, so uh, Deadman Heroes is a relatively traditional CCG. It's not dissimilar to Magic. It has a different mechanic. Um, but you, you have a deck of cards which you play against your opponent. Uh, that, that's closer to a more typical CCG. Deadbound Quest is more like a deck builder where you have a deck of cards that you use to play in a strategic fashion. Um, and that, that's a little bit more modern in terms of its approach. Um, Deadbound Quest is a mobile and desktop game. Deadbound Heroes is just browser based. Um, and we've got quite a, a good spread of uh, platforms uh, between the two games. So what is the... The, aim, uh, the target of the game for the player, is it just to survive or is it more to eat? Sure, yeah. So in Deadbound Quest, it's a survival game, it's a roguelike, so you play for as long as you can, explore as many levels in the dungeon as you can. If you get to the end of the dungeon levels, then you start again at the beginning at a higher difficulty level. And it's really just about uh, practicing your skills and getting better at doing that. Deadbound Heroes is a competitive 1v1 game. Um, and you play to win matches and rank up and those kind of things, either against the opponent or a human opponent, opponent or against an AI. Is the game already released? No, this is actually the first time we've shown the game publicly. Uh, we'll be going into an early al access alpha beta type uh, phase later in the year, in the winter, uh, and people will be, will be able to, to get cards and play the game. Yeah, so, uh, can you show us something? Yeah, sure. So this is a game of heroes played between two two players. Can you get both of those screens in? Or? Yes, I get cool. both. So this uh, this player here is starting the game. Uh, this is their cards down here and their health. Uh, this is the opponent flipped around on the other screen there. You can browse the abilities on each card uh, by clicking on the cards directly uh, or by using the abilities panel here which shows you all of the active and available abilities that you've got. These things in the middle of the map are outposts. You can occupy the outposts by reducing their health to zero. Once you've occupied them, it's sort of a creature. Uh, once you've summoned a creature there, you'll be able to use it to attack the opponent directly. So from my next turn, I'll be able to use that to attack the opponent for two damage. Um, so I'm going to end my turn here, and then this player will do something similar. Now on my next turn here, what I can do is use this outpost that I've already captured to either attack the opponent directly or to attack one of its outposts. Um, I've also got specific abilities related to outposts. I can increase the health of things, for example. I can heal myself. Uh, there are some AoE damage abilities where I can damage everything at once. Uh, so I can, for example, do three damage to every outpost owned by my opponent. We've only got one at the moment, but that will that will destroy that outpost and then maybe potentially allow me to reoccupy it at a later stage. As you play through a series of rounds, uh, the health of the outpost is reduced, and if that gets to uh, if the durability gets to zero, the outpost itself is permanently destroyed, manipulating the state of the map. It's a round based game, so when you get to the end of a round, the person whose health is zero first loses, um, and you start the next round with the same configuration of outposts. So your health resets, but the outposts remain the same, and your cooldowns remain the same. So I'm just going to do some more damage to the opponent here. What are the spheres in the middle doing? 
So the spheres are just neutral outposts. They're unoccupied at this stage. Um, they've got a health of 4 and a durability of 30. So it's 4, four damage to occupy it. But if I do 4 damage to it, it will reduce its du durability permanently. So for example, I could win this round by doing um, this very powerful ability, which is 8 damage to everything. Um, that's going to do 8 damage to me, and it's going to do 8 damage to my outposts, but it will also destroy the opponent, and I'll win the round. So, I can't start, I'll win the round, but now at the start of the next round, I destroyed these two outposts, but by, because it applied to everything, I've occupied these two outposts in the middle of the map. So I'm in quite a powerful position, uh, although that, that ability that I use has got quite a high cooldown, so I won't be able to use that again for a, 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 quite a while. So do you always steer from a god mode? Uh, sorry, say again? Do you always uh, control the game from that god mode, so you are, you are not representing a single character? That's but, right, yeah. Um, yeah. Or those cards, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you're effectively a, a sort of summoner, you're representing the cards that you have available to you. Um, you obviously get to configure your own decks, these are just demo decks that we're playing with at the moment. Uh, and the game is played across a series of maps, so this is a preview map, but we've got three or four other maps in development at the moment. They have different configurations of outposts which do different things and have different amounts of health and attack and all of those kind of things. Okay. Can you again show us how that looks on Android? Yeah, sure. I can show you on iOS, but it does look exactly the same on Android. Um, is that good? Yes. Okay, so this is Tagbound Quest. It's a dungeon explorer single player. You play as a quite weak character who walks around a dungeon looking for fragments to unlock a portal to reach the next stage. As you wander around the dungeon you'll encounter creatures. Go and see if we can find some creatures down here. So I can see that there's quite a tough creature coming up here so I'm going to draw some cards. Every time you do something in the dungeon the dungeon will do something in, in return. Uh, so I've got some creatures coming up here. I'm going to summon this hero to fight alongside me. The way the combat works is that any summoned creatures will attack before I need to attack. So I'm going to have my hero attack. And then I'm going to use one of these minions to finish off this creature here. In fact, that didn't quite finish it off. Let's see if we can... I think I can finish it off with this one. So that's, de that's destroyed that giant troll. I've survived, but I I've burnt through all of the cards. I'm just going to draw some more cards here. Get this hero to fight alongside me. The hero cards will follow you around, or the hero creatures. There's a fragment there, I'll just go and pick that up. I've got a couple of options, I can restore my health, I can recover played cards, that kind of thing. So I'm going to recover some played cards. And it's going to turn around there, I can see there's a bunch of tough creatures coming up here, so again I'm going to, I'm going to draw some more cards. This is a healing well structure that I can play, I'm going to place that in front of me. At the end of every combat that will heal any creatures that are placed there. I don't think that's going to be enough to keep my, uh, my creature alive, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Now, he gets destroyed, but hopefully this guy will stay alive. Uh, not quite, but I've managed to just about escape. I'll play my hero. There we go. So now I'm in a situation where my hero is going to be able to take quite a lot of damage. Uh, and so long as I stay on this healing well, I'll be able to just continually attack things. The healing well is just one of the structure types we have in the game. We've got teleportation structures. Uh, defensive walls, all kinds of other things that you can play into the dungeon based on the cards that you have available in your deck. Um, that's deckbound quest. Well, that's uh, very interesting. So what happens if you die? And uh, it's the end of the game. <laughs> then you restart from nothing? Uh, basically, yeah. Although, as you work through the dungeon, you unlock more fragments. And once you get to um, unlocking all of the fragments from a card back, then you receive a, an exclusive card back image much like the one that's on my uh, lanyard here. We've got a variety of different card backs in the game. Um, and uh, Quest allows you to unlock those directly just through play. Okay, thank you very much. No problem, I'll give you one of these, hang on.